Welcome back to another episode of Big Red's Isopods. Uh, this week we're gonna be feeding some of my isopods some algae and some um, uh, moss that I got from my fish tank that was just taking up too much space and some uh, other plants that were in there. We're gonna see if they're gonna mow down on it, take a look and see if that works out. I think it will, I've fed them some of that stuff before, but we'll see what happens. But uh, before we get started, I just wanna show you guys something else. Just before we get started here, I wanna give you guys a quick update on last week's pumpkin eat feeding video. So they're still mowing down on it, so I'm not gonna feed these guys any um, of the plants this week, but as you can see, they've done quite a lot of damage to it in the last week. I just wanted to show you guys kind of over a week's worth of damage that the isopods can do to half a pumpkin. It's not a large pumpkin. Uh, it's about the size of it was about the size of a volleyball, so about half the size of that. But yeah, that's quite a bit of damage, uh, in my opinion. So, so yeah. quickly, just want to show you guys. Uh, I redid the fish tank, my fish tank this week. These plants that you see that are growing in the back, we're covering the entire bottom of the tank. They started back where the filter is over here. They came down up to the front and spread across the bottom and they came up the side here and they were actually starting to grow across the top of the water. So much so that uh, I only had a little space about this big here uh, where I could actually feed my fish. So it was obvious that I needed to do something about it so I took the plants out and that's uh, what we're going to be feeding the isopods. So we're going to start off with one of my dairy uh, cow cultures. And I got two bags over here filled to the top with uh, different plants that were in there. And I'm just gonna throw them in like this and I'm gonna see uh, what they're gonna do. Now I'm sure they're gonna eat it just fine. I mean, I'm gonna feed them uh, some fish food like always as well and give them a spritz down. I just, I like to repurpose some of this stuff that I have. So obviously I couldn't sell the plants because I just, I don't think that I would have been feasible. It would have took them too long to sell the plants and a lot of it had hair algae, which is another reason why I didn't want it in there because um, nobody really wants hair algae in their, their aquarium. If you look up some pictures online, you can see um, what it'll do to the aquarium. It'll cover the entire thing with like uh, almost like a green hair in there and it's it's just a type of algae it's really what this thick stuff is right here when you take a better look at it it's just just a mat of stuff and it was getting stuck in the my java fern that i had in there so i just took it all out and uh took out the skull that the java fern was growing out of but uh already i can see there's some dairy cows sniffing around here like they're gonna have a munch on it so i'm sure that'll do well the dairy cows will eat everything so Let's go on to our next container. Actually, real quick before I go over to the other container, uh, I realized that I needed to put some cuddle bone in here. And I threw in a couple more of these other plants. They're the ones I told you about how they crawled along the bottom and up the other side. And already, the isopods are just mowing down on it, just going nuts all over the place. Going nuts on the java moss over here and the, the, the air algae. So I know this, that they're gonna have this all up by next week. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at my two cultures, uh, uh, Armadillidium paracae, uh, or paraca, whichever way you pronounce it. Um, they're both doing extremely well, really, really prolific cultures, uh, and they are huge, 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 huge um, veggie eaters. They do like their protein as well, but they really, really love their veggies, so I'm just going to take a couple handfuls of this stuff here. I also got some java fern in there. It was covered in uh, hair algae as well that I'm gonna be feeding them. Just everything I took out of the, the aquarium, basically I'm just gonna be throwing in here. And I know it might seem weird to some people that don't know much about isopods, but they're, they're actually detrivores. So what they do in nature is they take all the stuff that um, even a uh, good example for this is anything by the ocean, anything that washes up on the beach. There's isopods that uh, actually live near the beaches and will eat away at this stuff. There's other um, creatures out there as well, uh, like there's bugs and other sort of animals that do the same job. Uh, the detrivore kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, shoot. 
the niche, the Detriborn niche. There's uh, other animals out there that do that type of thing. But uh, these guys here, um, they're gonna have no problem eating this up. Just uh, mowing down on it and reducing it down to almost dirt. All right guys, now we're gonna take a look at my cultures of Porcellionatus um, Punatus uh, powder oranges. Which are both huge cultures, as you can see, there's a lot of isopods running around in both these cultures. So they're really gonna, they're really gonna tear up these plants. So I'm gonna give them a large amount in each container. It's a fairly large amount there. Have another handful over here. Now there is rocks in here because uh, they're stuck to the rocks. And there may be um, baby snails in here as well that I'm not too worried about because they're not uh, anything special. They're just uh, bladder snails and ram's horn snails that are kind of known as a pest snail. So it's not too big of a deal there. But uh, I'm sure they're gonna eat all this up and uh, they're gonna have a great meal out of it. Here we got another uh, culture of my Pronotus powder oranges that we're gonna be feeding some uh, more to. Now, the reason why I kind of made this video was to, first of all, show you guys that you can kind of feed these isopods like anything. Uh, it depends on what type of isopods you get. If you get some expensive ones, you're gonna to wanna to get some more specific food than this. But if you got just cheap isopods or you got something bioactive and you don't know what to feed them, you can feed them basically anything. Uh, there's nothing wrong with keeping some of the trimmings from your plants. And in this case, there's a lot of trimmings. Um, there's these shoots that came from one plant that attached to it, multiple plants, and then all of a sudden they would reach me. But um, I, I was taking these out of the fish tank and I figured, why not? You know, the isopods are gonna get a great meal out of it. And you know, it's a great way to, you know, kind of reuse some of the stuff that you got around the house. Uh, you got a, a fish tank where you got live plants in it and you gotta do some trimmings, feed them to the isopods. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. The isopods are gonna enjoy the meal. And you know, it's uh, better than throwing these out and being wasteful with, uh, with the plants. I mean, all they did was grow from the, the fish excrement. So, you know, I didn't put a lot of effort into it. I mean, I bought the plants, but in the fish tank, I still got more than I, I bought left in there. So, you know, this is perfectly fine. Um, over here, I got my species of um, Porcelia Valencia. Uh, they're still having some die out issues, not quite as bad as they were before. I'm gonna be feeding them a little bit of this hair uh, here, this algae hair, hair algae, I should say. Hopefully they'll eat it up. They do eat uh, fairly well as well. Uh, they have a lot of young in there, so I'm gonna be feeding them some fish food as well. Kind of try to sprinkle it on the dry side mostly so it doesn't get all moldy. But you kind of want to spread it everywhere so everybody has a fair chance to eat. And there is there is still a lot of isopods in here. There is still uh, die out happening, but not nearly as bad as it was, I don't think. Um, haven't quite figured out what's wrong with it, but who knows. Um, I gotta kind of find some time to look into it deeper. But the numbers are going back up, so that's a good sign. They are still producing young, so that's a great sign. Uh, so I'm not too terribly concerned about it. Obviously, it's not something I wanna see. Like, I'm not happy about it whatsoever. Kinda happy that the numbers are going back up, but seeing all the monkey run around is a good sign. And the last culture I'm gonna be showing you guys today or feeding for you guys today is my Procellio, or Procellio dietalis, the giant canyon isopods. So I know these guys are gonna eat up the, the plant matter just as quickly, just as voraciously as the rest. Um, these are very similar to Procellio lavis. Uh, they might be a little bit of a price difference. I'm not too sure exactly what it is. But these guys tend to burrow a lot more than uh, the Priscilla labus, but they have a high, 
high hunger drive just like the Belavis do. So they're going to eat all this up, all this plant, plant matter. So I'm just trying to get every last bit out of this container for them. Don't want to waste any of this good, good food for them. So that way they can uh, have a nice, uh, I don't know if it's per se healthy, but it, it can't be unhealthy. It's all natural um, food for them. It's something that they might come across in the wild, some decaying plant matter that uh, is no longer living, uh, some dead moss, like it's, it's perfect food for uh, detrivores. So I think they're gonna enjoy this and I think they're gonna have it all gone by next week. So, yeah. So in conclusion guys, try not to be wasteful whenever you got any uh, aquariums or anything where you trim up some plants or if you have any uh, rotten food around the house that are uh, vegetables, not meat products. Don't, uh, don't do it with meat products, but any vegetables or fruits and you got isopods, don't be afraid to feed it to them. As long as it's not gonna be uh, such a high quantity of food that they're not gonna be able to eat it in a week and it's gonna get moldy, then that's going to be an issue. Get some springtails. Uh, that could help stop that issue. But other than that, guys, uh, you know, it's it's a great way to feed your isopods. But not only that, reuse some of the material that you got around your house. So you're not uh, spending money on um, specialized food products for isopods. They don't need that type of stuff. In the wild, they don't have specialized foods. I mean, uh, it's it's really nice out to have people who create these products out there, but it's not necessary. Uh, I don't personally use those products. If I had the opportunity to, I would. But um, right now, the only ones I've tried are the Rapashi, and it's uh, too expensive for what uh, what I got going on here. I got too many isopods, and it's just it's not uh, feasible for how much I'd have to spend to feed them all. Not only that, I feel like this type of stuff they enjoy more. They enjoy more of eating this type of stuff than they would um, the bug burger that I got. Now I don't have specific isopod mix, but I was told the bug burger works just as well. And and it's a, it's a great product, it does its job, but this is just cheaper, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys all again next week. All right, bye.